Please welcome to the stage Bimodric founder Stefan Larsson. The BIM world is watching, at least. In my 30 years in this industry, trying to be innovative and changing the way designers and engineers work in our industry, I kind of very often came back to, are we still in the stone age in this industry? But I think there's still hope. And I will try in this 20 minutes to give you a little bit of the opportunities that lies ahead in our industry and what we can change. But most important, we have to understand the seriousness of climate change. We have to put it into our daily job as individual and as corporation in everything we do. And by the way, you might know that the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. It ended because there was a change in technology. Three things in life are certain. Taxes you know all about. Death you haven't seen yet, none of you. But the only constant in life is change. And this is really one I want you to take with you when you go back home. Change. Everything we look at today, we have to think about how the energy is produced that we use. Not only when we construct a building, but mainly when we operate a building. We have to open our eyes to consequences and really understand what does it take in the big picture, in the whole life cycle. Buildings don't go up one day and down the other day. They last for 50 years, 100 years, might even be several hundred years. And decisions we make in design or product choices or materials have a huge consequence moving forward. I'm writing here, we have to look at the building differently. There's two things I want every building to do. Conserve carbon. It's not that hard. There is something called wood, which comes from our trees that are perfect. They actually inhale the carbon dioxide we exhale, and they store it. And as long as you don't burn the forests, like they do in the forestations right now in Brazil, carbon dioxide is stored. We need to think about every building as a storage compartment for carbon. The other thing is, and Carl mentioned already, we have surfaces on the buildings. Why isn't every surface a solar panel? Why? If, if I would ask my kids, they would say, of course, it should. But there's something I call the solar walk of shame. It looks ugly. There's not a single designer with any kind of artist in him who would actually put solar panels like this after the building is done. It looks like crap, honestly. And I think none of you homeowners, home builders would actually put this stuff in there. And why is it so? There is solutions but we need to get it integrated into the design process, which is today a BIM process. Every single building today is done with some kind of digital tool. It might be a drafting tool still in some countries, but mainstream, we're using three-dimensional CAD tools, which today is building information modeling. And when you have these wonderful products, you need to get them into the hands of the designers or they will not use them. Very few will use them. And it doesn't need to be ugly. If you build clever systems, you can get it integrated. I was really frustrated back in December when I realized that, and I talked to Carl and said, do you know that we only have one solar panel manufacturer in the world on Beam Object? It's a disgrace. Of course, these are smaller companies, upcoming companies. They're not gi gigantic global corporations yet. So we started really uh, full power to build things. So right now, just after a couple of months, we are up to 18 manufacturers of solar. <laughs> 
One of my big heroes in today's world is Elon Musk. What he's doing in different areas of our industry with Tesla, the boring company, flying to Mars, is amazing. And you might know that he's starting a little bit to look at our industry, and he has the solar panels for the roofs. But Elon, where are you on Beam Object? Oh, our guys did it last night. <laughs> Welcome, Tesla. <laughs> so the big why, what are we doing and what are we contributing with? You should see Beam Object as a platform of communication where you can actually get 1.8 million of the most proactive digital architects, engineers, construction companies, and building owners in the world on one single platform. You have the ability to take the data, or we help you take your data, and build these small pockets of product information that goes into a BIM building or a BIM project and becomes a contextual part of the design. If we do it right, if we find the right data, if we, we know things, and we can help designers solve problems in the model and make more changes and more different variations and evaluate more variations, hopefully it will be a better designed building. And a lot of the things I'm asking the industry to do, like conserve carbon, how are you gonna prove that if we don't have the data? We need to get the data from you manufacturers to put that into this contextual box as a beam object to provide it to the next step. We cannot have people copy pasting things and numbers and don't understanding the context or the value or anything and make up their own generic stuff or their own sketchy stuff. It has to be correct and we have to prove things. So I always say solve the problem in the computer, not on the construction site. The cost of changing in the computer is almost nothing. It's all virtual. It's all zeros and ones, and it's very quick, very easy. But solving problems on the construction site, you all know, it's extremely expensive. And we have to look at reducing carbon, reducing cost, reducing risk. And one of the factors for that, I will come to more factors, but one is to have a very early engagement of the supply chain or the manufacturers or a combination thereof. The more engagement you have, the more you know, the better it is. Let's listen to this girl. No Three, two, one, go. Hey world, my name is Eddie Josam. This is my home, San Ayamen. It has suffered nearly five years of war, almost a quarter of my life. The world is in a bad shape. Not only here where water is scarce, but everywhere. Disasters are happening. The environment is damaged by waste and greed. People suffer. Disaster strikes. In Yemen, we know the good days don't last forever, but we now rely on solar powers, water systems, health centers, and soon schools run entirely by the sun. We don't rely on fuel. The sun provides us with the energy we need. Although the crisis here continues, we are rebuilding with an eye to a future. My future. If we can do it here, so can you. They're doing this in Yemen. So Carl talked about an urbanized planet. Two thirds of the population in 30 years will live in cities. But what, what the rest of them? Not all of them are that lucky. We need to have a plan for them too. If you heard my speeches from before, you know that I love Lego. I love the beauty and the simplicity of Lego. I love the fact that everything is pre-produced. You can start using it without any manual, any handbook. It's very standardized, it always fits together, but you still can be creative. 
one of the big things we have to change in this industry and going into an industrialized process is modules and modularization. I will show you one example now, which might not be a home where you want to live in, in the Western world, but we have to help the rest of the world. There is 20 million cargo containers sitting idle in the world right now. They are Lego. They are 20 foot, 40 foot. You can transport them by ship, by train, by trucks. Used for decades. We already have a module. Then people say, they're ugly. I don't want to live in a shipping container. Put these in the hands of the designers. Put these in the hands of the architects. This is just a structural component, what you can start building from. And this also gives you the ability to build not on site. You can put it together as Lego. And if you have seen a cargo ship, you know very well how structurally rigid these are. So this is one of the things, now it's called cargo texture. One of the trends you will see in our industry moving forward very, very, very quickly because it can assist us in understanding how we deal with logistics and how we actually can industrialize the process. And don't tell me this isn't beautiful. The other thing I've been thinking a lot about, and I saw this um, YouTube movie from a very small company in Bangladesh. They were actually allowing, so in Bangladesh basically every homeowner, it's not a home what you would call a home, but it's their home, they have a solar panel. And that might not be a big thing, but they also have a little box in their house. That box makes it capable of storing the energy and actually selling the energy to anyone else. And you know, they're using blockchain technology for this. In Bangladesh, what are we doing? We have problems in the Western world. In many countries, it's even illegal to sell energy, or electricity at least. Quite interesting. So the governments are working against us, against what we try to do. But the beauty is that also with climate change, we will have more storms, more flooding, more problems. And if you have a centralized system, just like with money and Bitcoin, it's centralized. The banks are controlling everything. You have one flow of electricity into your neighborhood. When you build this, it will be like a microgrid. It will look like the internet. It will look exactly and work exactly as a microgrid, protecting you if something is cut off, it will still work. It will find another way. And you can sell electricity to your neighbor. If your neighbor cannot afford the solar panel, he can get the little box. And that little box will work as the communication and selling and buying device of electricity. Pretty beautiful. So let's have a look at how actually governments have a huge impact on the environment. And really, shame on them. But we need to speak out, we need to talk. And look what's happening, pretty stable before the millennium. US, one big plant. Japan, subventions from the government. And when we let the years run a little bit, there is a country coming up called Germany. What does Germany have? Yeah, good engineers, but do they have better solar systems? Do they have more sun than we have? Or what do you have? Subventions from governments. So the more you do research in sustainability and environment, you start to realize that there is a lot of challenges here which we have to get governments to understand, and municipalities, etc. And they need to help and assist and always think sustainable. Everything has to go down to supporting the environment and what's good for us in the coming years. You will see China pass everybody very soon here. But also China, which is on everybody's lips right now, 
with 800 dead in the coronavirus, 1.6 million people die in China out of air pollution every year. Nobody tells people not to walk outside. Industrialization have not taken place in our industry yet. You might have an industrial process producing your materials, but we are still using the site as a construction, a place of construction. We have to change that. The same, this is actually a picture from Cree. They were a speaker for a couple of years ago, but we have to look at the building site as a building assembly place. And we have to think in elements and prefab and modules, and we have to build in wood and other sustainable materials that conserves carbon. Online to offline, we have to make things much more lean. We have to already have an understanding when we industrialize how to actually get the logistics in place and delivery. And shame on us, we still waste 830 million tons every year only in Europe on construction sites. Again, this has to change. And the way we think that every building has to be something magnificent and this prototype to prototype, it cannot last any longer. So what are we? We are an information provider. We are a data mining company. We have built an ecosystem where our dreams and vision is to connect every single product, manufacturer products, engineers, specifiers, designers, and architects together in a network. Just as Carl said, why do you need to go to an expo? And by the way, all expos are canceled now anyway, so I don't know where we're going, but our expo is open 24-7. By the way, I will remove these slides after this show because everybody's now using Beam Object. 100 out of 100, both on design firms and architecture firms. So welcome to the platform universe. Google might be good in finding you stuff and helping you placing ads when you, somebody's trying to search something, but it's chaos. The internet is a full-time chaos. You cannot trust anything today. You cannot trust what people are tweeting. You cannot trust data or information from news agencies. You cannot trust anything anymore. So what we are doing, we are taking our platform as a trustworthy and secure place, which conforms with the standards, the metadata, and the way things have to be to work in BIM. That's what we're doing with our platform. Some things to remember. And th some things which will be the most important things from owners and developers' point of view. And remember these two things. One is total cost of ownership. It, it means when you're buying something, it's not the cheapest product that wins. It's the whole footprint of that product over the life cycle of the building. An LCA, life cycle analysis, similar thing. We have to look at the footprints of carbon, fresh water, and of course energy produced to produce the product. And then you have a total different view. For that, this, we need data. We need more data than we have today. And we are gonna mine that data and provide that to the community of architects and engineers all over the world. A Couple of other trends which you need to be aware of which is already here. DFMA, from design to manufacturing and assembly. For a couple of years ago, we proved that with our Millimi concept. We showed that we could go from a Revit model straight to robots, and we could produce kitchens with no drawings, nothing more than a data stream. 3D printing will also change the world and the way we do things. You no longer need to do things in a factory and transport it. You can actually produce it wherever you want. You just need the printer and the material. And the way that evolution is going is extremely fast. 
So keep an eye on what's going on. Back to data. So we need data and we will put that data into contextual information to enable people to visualize, calculate, elaborate, try more different variations to make the best sustainable environmental choice in the future, not the cheapest product and so on anymore. So this is my takeaway from this. Before the world ends, we have to change, change, change. We have to think sustainable and change. We have to use digital to provide information, not to go to bow. It costs you $2 million and you can get a virus. We need to provide information to the designers if they cannot make this information themselves. They can make a building and design a building and construct a building and analyze a building, but they need the data. Last, before I go off the stage, please do like Steve Jobs did, dare to challenge everything, everything. We have a planet to save or humanity, because the planet will always survive. It's humanity that will end. Thank you very much.